In his first year of high school, John sits in the front row of his favorite class, biology. His teacher presents an image on the smart board that leaves John a little unsettled. She then proceeds to teach the class at length about a British scientist named Charles Darwin. By the end of her lecture, the class is convinced that life began by means of a big explosion in the universe and that humans derived from their common ancestor, which were apes. The teacher now opens the floor to questions. Some students sit back quietly. Many are very excited about they, what they just learned and have questions. But John specifically sits in his, in his chair and shrinks back with uncertainty and confusion. After class, John spoke to one of his classmates and expressed that he was always taught that God had created all things. And his classmate expressed similar sentiments and found it difficult to follow the logic of what the teacher had just taught them. Both boys decide to just keep their concerns to themselves in order to avoid the embarrassment of challenging the textbook. Each school year, scenarios like these play out in several classrooms around the world. What should John and students like him do? Should they do their own research and come to their own conclusion as to what they will believe? Or should they just blindly accept what the educational institution is presenting to them? Although Darwin's theory of evolution is widely accepted by scientists, it is not a fact and should not be taught as one. Being an A student in biology for the past two years, I am credible to talk about this topic because I have extensively analyzed it and I am very interested in coming to the conclusion of what really is the truth. Today, I will inform you about one, the distinction between evolution and intelligent design, two, how the theory of evolution contradicts logic, and three, why evolution alone should not be taught as fact in public classrooms. There is a clear distinction between evolution and intelligent design. In 1859, Charles Darwin, a British biologist, introduced his theory of evolution to the world through his infamous book, On the Origin of Species. In his book, he reasoned that by the process of natural selection, all species gradually evolve and into what we see today. This is a process um, of natural selection and it can be summed up by the words descent with modification, which you're probably familiar with by survival of the fittest. Intelligent design, on the other hand, is the belief that the universe and all living beings in it were created by a divine superior. This belief was widely accepted before Darwin's theory of evolution even surfaced and it's supported by ancient um, ancient and very credible books, including the Bible, the Torah, and the Quran, that all give credit to God for creating all things. In fact, the first scripture in the Holy Bible, Genesis 1, 1, says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now that we've discussed the differences between evolution and intelligent design, Let's move on to discussing more specifically the how the theory of evolution contradicts logic. Evolution may seem somewhat logical, but it lacks enough evidence to be stated as fact. As a very widespread belief, I am completely aware that several people believe in evolution. Several scientists, including Charles Darwin, make a very compelling claim. However, it's difficult to see the logic in this teaching when starting from the very beginning. I know that we're all aware that of Charles Darwin's proposed theory of evolution, but evolution aside, how, how about we look at how life actually began? What do evolutionists believe was the origin of life? Well, according to a 1960 article in the Science Journal, that was written by biochemist Sidney W. Fox, Darwin proposed the idea of spontaneous generation. 
In other words, one or more of Earth's nine living chemicals spontaneously assembled together to form a living cell that was later able to divide and create the vast species that we see today. Now, this is an interesting theory, but it contradicts the fundamental fact that life always comes from pre-existing life. So, could life really spontaneously spring from non-living chemicals? And if so, how likely is this to happen? Well, the 2010 brochure, The Origin of Life, Five Questions Worth Asking, answers these questions for us. The article brought out that it's confirmed that for a cell to divide, for a cell to survive, at least three different types of complex molecules must be present. DNA, RNA, and proteins. And many scientists feel like this could arise by chance because of an experiment that was conducted in 1953 by American chemist Stanley L. Miller. He was able to scientifically produce amino acids, which are building blocks for proteins. However, chemist Robert Sharpio of New York University acknowledges that Miller was able to scientifically produce amino acids, but emphasized that without the other two building blocks, that life could never be produced. He further stated that the probability of self-replicating RNA molecules randomly assembling from a pool of chemical building blocks is so vanishingly small that it's happening even once anywhere in the visible universe would count as a piece of exceptional good luck. So what can we conclude? Number one, Miller's ability to scientifically produce amino acids is simply amazing. But did this prove that a cell could be produced by accident? Actually, it proves the very opposite. It needs to be created. And number two, if science research indicates that life cannot spring from non-living matter, then what is the scientific basis for saying that the first cell spontaneously sprang from non-living chemicals? Now that we've discussed evolution's problematic logic, let's move on to discuss why evolution alone should not be taught as a fact in public schools. Teaching evolution as a fact robs youth of intellectual freedom. Recalling our um, illustration at the outset, put yourself in John's shoes for a minute. Imagine being taught at home that God created all things and then being taught in school that basically God doesn't even exist because evolution happened and everything just came to be. How would you feel? Lost, confused, frustrated, maybe even offended, I wouldn't be surprised to believe. According to the Pew Research Center's Religion and Public Life Project, about 78% of the American adult population are religious people, most of which belong to Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. This research also revealed that only 19% of the adult population are considered non-denominational, meaning that they do not belong to a specific religion. So since more than three-fourths of Americans are religious, it's safe to say that more than three-fourths of Americans believe in God. If they believe in God, they also teach their children to believe in God, which means that they believe in a creator or intelligent design. So the question that we need to ask now is, since more than three-fourths of the American population believe in intelligent design, why is evolution alone taught as a fact in public schools? The question is, the answer is simple. Kitz Miller versus Dover. So I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but in 2005, the landmark legal case Kitz Miller versus Dover in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, established that the teaching of intelligent design in the United States public school system is unconstitutional because of the idea that it's fundamentally religious and not scientific. 
Evolution remains a theory because it cannot be completely proven. And creationism or intelligent design remains credible to Christians and people, other people who are religious, but is not accepted by people who do not believe in a higher being. So therefore, since there are two major beliefs of, on the matter, both should be equally taught in the public school system. This will ensure that our youth receive a well-rounded education and a non-biased education that will help them to be equipped to make a sound decision for themselves. Today we discuss the distinction between evolution and intelligent design, how the theory of evolution contradicts logic, and why evolution alone should not be taught as fact in public schools. Although Charles Darwin's theory of evolution is widely accepted by several scientists today, it is not a fact and it should not be taught as one. Rather, the public school system should offer education on both popular beliefs and allow its students to do as they please with that information and choose what they want to believe. If this was the case, John would have more likely been open to learning about a new concept rather than his own personal beliefs being simply discredited. Thank you.